While many people go out of their way to avoid some of nature's less majestic creatures, Cherokee biologist Caleb Hickman tells us why they are important to our traditions and to the environment, and why they should always be respected. If you're from Oklahoma and you come out here to the homeland, you're gonna find it familiar. I think that it could be because you may have grown up in the Ozarks and there's some similarities, or maybe there's some ingrained genetic tie to this place. But you'll see oak, hickory forests, you'll see clear creeks, you'll see a biodiversity here like you won't see other places in the entire country. This place is, is unique, and if you come here, you'll see it, you'll feel it. Osiona God, Caleb Hickman Dawado. Hello everybody, I'm Caleb Hickman. I'm a biologist for the Eastern Band of Cherokee Indians. We study a variety of organisms, plants, animals, all game, non-game species. We study the cultural importance of these organisms. And we also do uh, restoration of species that uh, we need to bring back. Where we're at here is our homeland, and the ecosystem is a part of that homeland and our connection to it. So humans are part of the system, and animals as well, like this guy. <laughs> so we have a couple of elk. So the elk like to like to interact with the system too. <laughs> Historically, Cherokees, we lived with the system and we adapted. And today, ecologists have discovered <laughs> that same perspective of living with the system. But we've known that for thousands of years. So now folks are now, they want to tap us on the shoulder and ask us, hey, what do you know? How many of you here know uh, Dueca salamanders? Good? Huh? You guys have heard of them? You've got more species of salamanders here than anywhere on the entire planet. They're everywhere here. Their presence is an indicator of the health of our system. And I want the kids to understand that. Around when I came here, I learned this. And I heard it from several people. So I consider this traditional knowledge. Uh, one of the sayings is never drink from a branch, which is like a creek, right? Unless the water has rolled over five rocks and a lizard's back, which is salamander. So the, the salamander is an indicator of that water quality, whether you should drink it or not. And the water is very clean here. But historically, our ancestors used something like that to tell us about the system. And today, ecologists do the same thing. We have a few long-term projects where we monitor bat species. We could have up to 13 different species if they were all still around. A268, another female. But you look good. You are healthy. I'm not gonna mess with you anymore. Let's go. This is um, a small-footed bat. They're tiny little bats, but they eat a lot. They eat a ton of insects. A, a colony can eat a ton at a night. That's not an exaggeration. So, because they consume so many bugs, they're, they could be important for pest management. So if we lose them, that would be a horrible loss because they, they provide a, a good service for us. But the colony looks like they're doing great up there. I haven't seen that many in a long time, so that's, we thought that maybe the last few years we've checked, we've seen fewer and fewer up there, and we were starting to get a little worried. But I, I did see a few that were tagged from several years ago. It's a male, and he's healthy. Doing good.
I'm from Mays County, Oklahoma. I grew up um, in Pryor, Pryor Creek, Oklahoma. And uh, yeah, I grew up near a lake where I fished, hunted with my three brothers, lived outside pretty much. Climbed trees, built forts, like a lot of kids. I'm married, I have two boys, and um, they're little boys, Milo and Waylon. Milo Yona, I gave him a Cherokee name. <laughs> And uh, Waylon. Come on, Waylon. In the creeks I grew up in, they're starting to deal with some problems, dealing, you know, with some pollution. And, you know, we still have endangered species there and here. So we're, we're all dealing with things like climate change. But human development is a big problem. And back home, I know this. And, and that's something you can see. You know, you can see it on the landscape. When I go home and visit, there's considerable changes every time. So that's, that's concerning to me, that folks may not have clean water. And, and clean water for us is our medicine, and we need to have that. And in the hills I grew up near in Oklahoma, I know a lot of people that are tied to that. I grew up going to creeks. Oh, good job, buddy. And having a clean creek to go in and catch crawdads, you know, go fishing in, go swimming in, and feel that you're safe and your kids aren't going to be infected, you know, with fecal coliform or E. coli um, is important. And, and that's something folks need to start noticing. to make sure that this water is clean, not only for the people right now, but, but you know, your kids, your grandkids, seven generations away, make sure that it's clean. It's our responsibility to do that. We have to do that. So I have future plans where I would love to see Cherokees from Oklahoma and here join together in the homeland uh, to revitalize our culture, to restore things, to reconnect the tribes through this, this landscape, through the organisms, uh, culture keepers, knowledge keepers, people that, that, uh, that have this information that we can work together on and combine it in our historical landscape. One thing that makes me really hopeful is we have a large population of Cherokees and I think we're becoming more and we're becoming more engaged in how important the environment is. With those numbers and with that excitement, uh, we have the possibility to do some really important changes and I want to see that. But another thing that makes me really hopeful is like today, those kids, that they were excited. That's an important one to me. And if you change a couple of minds, that can become, you know, kind of infectious and we can, we can leverage that. I think my legacy, I want to know that, that I connected people, that I, I did something that uh, Cherokees could be proud of, but also that maybe even the U.S. government and other governments beyond us could learn from us, because I think they can.